It's what you do, what you do. It's when you put your tongue. It's a shoot of your lips. Let's make it fun. Funny call stars. Welcome back to uh, one of the Funny Call Star training videos. This one is um, a little bit of fun for the kids, but it enables them to actually develop their written skills and to learn their graphemes or to learn their letter patterns, which is not so easy for children when there are so many. So what we do at Optimal Communications is I like to combine a lot of the things that we're doing together just to make it fun and and when the children um, come in for their therapy or we're attending group they get to go into the treasure boxes and they get to earn tokens so they get tokens for pretty much everything and anything but they do have to earn them as you can see here um, and sometimes I'll be rewarding them for the activities that they're doing but I could also be rewarding them on um, having some resiliency it might be that they were honest when I went out of the room and they they kept doing, um, they followed through with their work and they didn't cheat, <laughs> you know, just lots of different things. So having a reward system is really important and it can actually be the magic and the therapy that can make a difference as to whether children work hard or not. So please, you know, what may seem like frivolous stuff that you're throwing in and it does take time to put in place and take time to follow up with. Don't shortcut on this stuff because sometimes it is actually the difference between um, children who do work hard and get the success and, and who don't because they're motivated. So what we do with our tokens is as the children who are earning their tokens, these are equivalent to money in our clinic actually, and they're, they're all of the phonic all-star characters. They pulled them out of the box and um, we do have one particular token which is the, the orb the magic secret orb and if they pull that out of the box we actually have a, a little prize system here where they can pull out a surprise from Sydney Snakes box so that's highly motivating for them to to have to get into the the box um, I mean you don't have to do this but it just gives you a way of, of um, other ways to keep the carrots going because some children you do work with they can switch the leverage that you have you might be something might be working one week and then then they turn around and say, I don't like stickers anymore, mum, or I don't, I don't like that. So, so this just gives you some more creative ways of keeping them involved. And what we do with ours is we actually have a shelf full of prizes, and those prizes don't have to be bought. We've um, had some of them given to us by people when they're th about to throw things away that are, are, are lovely things, but they're just not precious to those people anymore. Or um, some of the things are... Um, well, I know a lot of my things from the house when I'm ready to hand them over go on the shelf, McDonald's toys, um, also um, things that we do. We may spend just a little bit of money, but I'm telling you, for children, it is highly motivating. And you will be shocked, even without the prize shelf, you will be shocked how hard kids work for a piece of plastic or a piece of ca uh, cardboard laminated. And, and I think sometimes it's, it's quite amazing to see the motivation when you do use them. So these are, this is what our token system is. But it doesn't just end there where they're um, earning their 10 and their 20 and 30 integrals to actually get onto different prize levels of the shelf because they do have to work hard, as you can imagine, to get 50 of these. But they do. They, have, they actually work that hard. But what we do is we add it together as part of their program. So as they start to collect them, and this is an example of one of the students' collections and their tokens that are ready to go, what we do then is turn it into an activity for their reading and for their spelling, but especially for their writing. And we integrate the Phonic All Star program as part of this. So for example, this is what we call the, the graphene belt or the letter belt. And what the children do is they work with their, their tokens that they've earned progressively to work out how to write those letters. Now I have developed this card to go with that activity. Okay, this is the um, learning the speech sounds. This this one's the wall 
poster which is a lot larger if any of you are needing it for home or for your school classroom but in your folder you will have the folder guide that can go back and forward from school to homework from school to homework so this is your folder guide and on the um, sheets you'll notice we have the consonants on one side and you have the vowels on the other side now take a close look at this folder guide because what you'll notice is there's numbers in the boxes so you'll see there's the character picture there's the letter okay but you'll also notice that there's a number on each one that number corresponds say for example this was elder's egg that i was showing you that number then corresponds to the car now that becomes very important when we're getting up to the second level of this program so this is at the second level where children know all the sounds they know those early graphemes, but then what they're having to do is learn the other one. They're having to learn the other choices of how we actually spell this sound. So for example, for Elder's Egg, we have E, but we also have E-A. And in red now and then, I'll put an alert, alert. This is a different word like said, because that's a sight word. So because it's such a high frequency word that was put on the card. Now what you'll notice is this second level card, these are, are different from the first. These don't have a star, they have a yellow triangle. So this is hinting to the children that you now know that there's one way to write it, but there may be other ways as well. So E is E-A. We might also look at, for example, OI. So if we go to the card, we'll notice that is 40 for oi, for Joyce Oyster. These, if you look at your cards, you'll see there is a star at the bottom of the card. I like to keep my level two set of cards on the ring. I don't take them off. The level one set, they're the flippers. You can take them, mix them up, keep them in any order. But the level two, I always keep in their numerical order so that they're easier to find. So here's 40, and this is Joyce Oyster. And if we have a look down here, we're gonna now see that there's actually two ways of doing oi. O-Y and O-I. So this is great because what it does is it helps to narrow down their guessing. So if, for example, the child is spelling the word boy, and or even a better example might be oil, and they spell O-Y-L, then what can happen is in their writing, if they've written oil, O-Y-L, you could put a triangle in pencil over that O-Y, and that cues to the child to go and get their chart, they go look up oi, number 40, go to their card and then learn something at that point and learn oi, oh that's the other way we spell oil and then what right, I, I like to sometimes write the other version on the point of that triangle up the top and then rewrite that word and what will happen is progressively through their um, written work, they're gonna be adding to their knowledge of what graphemes are and getting them in, in, in incrementally more accurate. Now, at this point, this is where it gets quite fun, and I'll be having some more videos on this in depth as we go further, because this at this level, it is a combination between two skills. It's a combination of their phonological processing to be able to pull those sounds together. Oi, all, or for example, say it's Oyster, uh, oyster, and then choosing the OY variation. So it does require that still that phonological processing skill, and that's what we need for accuracy. But what we want to do at this level is we want to bring in the second skill, which is vitally important at this point, which is your actual visual memory. The ability to take a, a photo on you know, your sketch pad memory, to hold it there, and to then be able to burn that in as the correct version. And we know this works in our brain because you know when you read text and you go, oh, that word's not right? That's showing us that our proofreading and our visual memory knows the correct versus incorrect. Um, from years of working with people with brain injuries and strokes, 
sometimes you'll even see just that module in the brain gets affected and that person can't actually proofread they can't tell right from wrong so that's it just shows there's a part of the brain that actually develops this skill however in saying that that's for us when we've put in all those words, when we've looked at those words and burned them in. The children that are learning, they haven't yet, so they don't have that correct model. So this is where that word worm's so great, putting it on the wall so that they're seeing those words, visually creating those lines and edges around what that correct picture and correct pattern actually is. Okay, so what we do next, we've got our cards, is we work on the graphene belt. I love this. This is so much fun. Okay, so I'm just going to show you an example of how we would add to the graphene belt. Okay, so what we do is just basically go to each character. This is a character of Toby Tap. You're going to need your hole punch. I put a, hunch, a punch at the top and a punch at the bottom in all of the um, things that I have. This hole punch is already. sound in its letter so this is a T so I would write the letter T and do use the guide if you need to so the children can copy the letter so you can place that down in front of them either this one or the the green um, tabletop guide okay and I progressively work through and put so here I've got all the jaws Here's all the jaws, so I would look up all the jaws and I'd find out he is all O R X. This is the star cutter. All right, now what I do is I put a hole at the top and put a hole at the bottom. So you can see this one, we've started the graphene belt here, but I'm going to show you how I make it from scratch. I like to use one of the big beads. We've pre -pre prepared some of the connectors too. It's always really great to sort of, for activities, kids tend to be quite distracted. So it's good to be organized for the actual activity. So I would first of all start with a bead and you can see that we've got the bead here and I thread that through and then hook that bead on like I've done with this one, okay? But then, Oh, here's a bead. I can use one of these ones here. I thread the bead on. So I pick these beads up. These are cheap. We just got them from Crazy Clarks or some um, chip shop. You know, you don't need anything fantastic and expensive. You'll be surprised what you can have, you can do in therapy that makes a difference. And then I thread one as a connector. I do like to put something between the um, tokens because that helps them when the children need later to use them they need to line up it's almost like they're all holding onto a rope that's what we want and also when you do make this to do try and make them so they're all facing the same way the reason for that is because we're going to start extending on this and making them drop down off the belt okay so what I would do is I would then thread my character onto the pipe cleaner and then put another bead. I love sometimes using the stars. I've actually got the funnical stars here too, which are really cool. But we'll just use some beads today, which is fine. And then thread the next one. So I would progressively do this with the child. Well, they would do it actually, and I'd help with their their spelling, uh, their writing of that letter. This enables you to really see what they're visual motor and their, their hand motor skills are like and if, if they are having significant problems in organising their, their um, visual space of where to put that letter or they may be having problems coordinating how to um, hold the pen and to move the pen so that's their fine motor skills and also children can have problems constructing the complex task so they, they, they get confused of when to, where to go so maybe start at the top and then come down and then make a round arc and and then bring it through through into a circle like in the letter b and this is 
this is then under the topic of motor planning. So this can be children who, suffer, who are managing dyspraxia. So any of those types of conditions, um, the occupational therapist goes into a lot more depth in these areas to specifically train these individual skills and how they develop in the mind as well. So ugly undies. So we'll go to the chart and find him. He's number 29 and right for you. Okay, now as we progress further, what we might find is as we come to another token, we might realize, oh, we've actually done this one. So if I use this belt for an example, ah, we had an oar. Oh, this is good. So I could have used this oar, and I might do this on this belt. So let me just take this back and I'll put an oar on here. Never mind, put that on the floor. Here. So right or now what we can do is if we've already done the or and it's sitting, I like my level one tokens to be actually sitting on the chain. They're holding the chain. They're the ones that are on the level one cards and on the star. And then what I do is with that all, I would rub, I would have rubbed that out by the way. Okay, and I then go and look up all here. And all is fantastic because there is so many ways. There's so many ways to do it. So this one I'd go to number 35. Here. And then I look at all these chains, and what you're going to see is there's all these different ways to actually produce ore. So I would then find another way and write that on the card. Now one of these is O-R-E. So why don't I just add an E? So I add an E here, okay, and then what I do is I get a connector. And with that connector I join it together, and then I connect it to the one above it. So now we have O-R and we have O-R-E. And I might even go to their workbook and then start writing a key word that represents each one of those sounds. So progressively as the children earn the tokens, we might get some more OR, all of JAWS tokens, and then we might have A-W for jaw. We might have A-U for haunt. We might have a R, such as in warm. We might have a U G H, such as in court. Can you see how challenging this does get for children? But what I love about the belt is it's tactile, it's visual, it's experimental, experiential. So what happens is the children are using different parts of their brain to actually deepen and deepen and develop this learning and to really load it in. And this is so good as a way of giving them their theory that they're going to need when they're doing their spelling in the classroom. So I hope you enjoyed that. And these belts do end up becoming really, really, really long and really, really developed. So this is a fantastic tool. It does not have to be done in one setting. Please do not do that. You know, it's progressive over the series of working with your child over time. So I look forward to seeing you at your next video and I really hope you enjoyed doing your belts because I know the kids love the belts. See you soon. Bye. It's what you do, you do, it's when you put your tongue It's a shape of your lips, let's make it fun Follicle stars Put your tongue Follicle stars